welcome back to my channel today I'm here with a very fun video you guys I've done one of these one or two of these before I will try and link them up here and down in the description box I remember once I had a lot of requests for this type of video and I did a video testing luxury perfumes deciding what I was going to buy next so that's exactly what I'm doing today I have a lot of luxury niche fragrances here that I would like to try and decide what I want to buy next. As you guys know, these luxury ones are quite expensive. So I try to keep the blind buying to a minimum. You know what I mean? Usually you guys, I gotta say, I usually just blind buy everything I buy. Very rarely do I test samples. I should do that more often. I do have some luxury fragrance purchase regrets because I didn't test them out first. So I thought since I have all these perfume samples that I received from these luxury houses with my other fragrance purchases, why don't I test them out and decide what I want to purchase next? I have a lot of them, so I'm gonna to try to get through them fast. I have Diptyque, I have Bomb Number no. 9, I have House of Siage, I have House of Oud, I have Fujia. I have a lot to test, you guys, so let's get right to it. Okay, you guys, I think I'm gonna start with the Bond Number no. 9 fragrance samples that I have here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I was in New York City for my birthday with my family. You guys all saw the vlog. I will link it up here and down in the description box. And this sweet lady at the Bond Number no. 9 counter, oh, she was lovely. She was a lovely lady. My daughter had gone ahead of me and already was talking to this lady and testing fragrance samples by the time I approached the counter you guys and she had picked out the perfect fragrance for her already and I approached and, and the lady was in love with my daughter she's she's a really cute girl so she was like oh I love her and, and then she gave me some fragrances to test and she said she was gonna send me some samples to test and she just send them to me she's so lovely and on the back of it she sent this lovely handwritten note you guys she's so sweet she said dear cleo it was a pleasure to meet you i hope you enjoy the samples i'm sending you today her name is jeanette she's such a lovely person so she sent me five samples you guys these little bonbons you know their samples are so cute I love these. So she sent me Madison Square Park. So I'm gonna try that one first. I'm gonna go ahead and unravel the bonbon. It's not cute. It's so cute. I love these little bonbons. Love the way they package samples. This is Madison Square Park. Mmm. Very fresh floral. This is very fresh floral, kind of green. There's rose in here, I'm sure and there is a little bit of fruitiness and then there's a slight hint of fresh spiciness as well right in the opening i get like the, a, a little bit of a green note and then i'm getting a little bit of a powderiness as well yep you guys i looked up the notes and in the opening this has grass you know the green note that i was getting very like fresh cut kind of grass but it's very not like not that very strong fresh cut grass smell but more of a, a more of a perfumey version of it and it's not too strong in your face but it's rather very beautiful adding to the freshness of the fragrance and there's hyacinth in the opening and I knew there was some kind of like powdery floral in here. And then there is um, a blueberry in the opening as well, giving it a little bit of a fruity, juicy freshness. And in the middle you get rose and tulip, you guys. That's really pretty. Um, tulip must be a fantasy note because tulip doesn't really have a fragrance, as you know. So it's got to be a synthetic fantasy kind of fragrance note. And then in the base you get teakwood and vetiver. But I'm sure you guys there are more notes than that in this fragrance. But those are the ones they revealed. Definitely I pick up on that rose. It's very, very strong, prominent I would say. 
with that freshness of the grass the green freshness and there's like I said a little hint of like fresh spiciness in there and the vetiver adds that slight earthiness so it kind of smells like a fresh rose growing in your garden you know and it's fresh cut I really quite like this this would be amazing for summer you guys this would be a fragrance that perform super super well in the heat this would be great for hot summer months. So I'm gonna put that aside and now I'm going to try the next one. So this one is Madison Avenue, the pink bonbon. So I'm gonna unwrap this and try it out. Mmm. Oh, I like this, you guys, right away. Very, very feminine, very beautiful. She knew I was very much a feminine scent kind of girl. Although I gotta say, sometimes I surprise myself. I like some masculine scents. For example, I just did a Kriegler house review, you guys, and I tested some Kriegler fragrances and I bought two full bottles and I also reviewed those. Check that video out. I will link it up there and down in the description box. In that video, I surprised myself because I didn't like the feminine leaning ones. I like the more masculine leaning ones, you know, because sometimes I surprise myself. It depends. This is a very like fruity, sweet, um, kind of rose fragrance with like fruity sweetness. It's a, it's very much floral, I would say. It has a hint of patchouli. There's a little bit of citrus in here as well. And, and there's, of course, I smell some white florals and it is fresh and it's woody. It opens with green apple, I believe, and blackberry and bergamot. So bergamot adds that freshness. Blackberry, you know, has that kind of berry, juicy fruitiness about it. Uh, green apple, you know what that does to fragrances. And then in the middle you get uh, rose, jasmine, and magnolia. That's why I love this fragrance because you know I love my white florals. I love my florals, period. I love rose as well. But that magnolia, you guys, that's really pretty in this fragrance. Really love that it's with jasmine too. I love jasmine. And then another reason I know I love this fragrance is that it has praline in the base. Duh, of course I love it. To lighten up the praline gourmand denseness, there is ambroxan in the base, which is the synthetic version of ambergris, which kind of lightens it up a little bit. It gives it a kind of a... a um, freshness to the fragrance you know lightness to the fragrance and then there's patchouli in the base as well so yeah i love love this one madison avenue then i have greenwich village i actually already have a sample of it um right here actually i have tested this fragrance before she sent me another one so i'm just gonna leave this without opening it maybe i can gift it to somebody so yeah greenwich village i already know how i feel about it but i'm going to test it in front of you guys Funny story with Greenwich Village. I ordered this for sure once and my order got canceled. Then I thought I placed the order again. Turns out I didn't check out. It happens to me all the time, you guys, because I'm always buying stuff and sometimes I have like two computers and I have like them all over the place. Ooh, by the way, I'm getting a whiff of it already. The long story short, I didn't end up ordering it. I'm glad I didn't. This gives me major Baccarat Rouge 540 vibes. I already have Baccarat Rouge 540 and I have the x version. I do not, and I have ton of dupes for it, like inspired by fragrances. Of those, I have too many Baccaras and Baccarat, you know, like fragrances. I don't need another one. I will say this one is a little bit more, I would say feminine leaning than the Baccarat Rouge. Uh, this one is a little bit sweeter, I would say as well. Nonetheless, it gives me the Baccarat Rouge vibes and I do not need another Baccarat Rouge 540-like fragrance in my collection. It's quite sexy with the musk in here. The musk is pretty nice in this fragrance. Now that may be where this kind of takes a, a different road from Baccarat Rouge. Baccarat doesn't have musk the way that, you know, like this one has. This one's also like ambery and kind of tropical smelling too, slightly. You know, very, very fresh and aquatic for sure. There's citrusiness in here as well. I mean, it has different notes from Baccarat but for some reason it smells very similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. It opens with lychee, cassis, mandarin orange, stuff like that. That lychee has a nice fruity touch in the opening, which is probably why this one 
feels sweeter but also there's praline in the in the base that's why this one is much 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 sweeter than Baccarat Rouge and in the middle you guys you have water lily jasmine and peony they sound divine a water lily Mwah. oh they smell good you guys and in the base you get that beautiful ambroxan there is a big dose of vanilla there's praline with that gourmet touch and there's oak moss and there is um, musk. I actually have another fragrance like Baccarat Rouge. It's in very much a dupe for Baccarat. It's the uh, Oula Rouge by Christian Siriano. This is reminding me a little bit of that because that one has praline as well. But this one is quite unique with the beautiful water lily, I think in the middle and the peony and the jasmine in the middle. That one I'm on the fence about. I may not purchase it right away, but maybe down the line someday I might. I don't know, but not right now. So this one is Central Park West that she also sent. Mmm. Wow, this one is really good. I like this one, this is very feminine. You guys, this one is a majorly white yellow floral fragrance. I can pick up the white florals and the yellow florals in here really well, like right away. You know I'm a white yellow floral lover. Mm, I think I smell jasmine for sure, maybe gardenia, maybe tuberose. I don't know, but I know I smell some yellow florals here. Maybe Ylang Ylang. Not frangipani, I don't think. Ylang Ylang, maybe. I'm not even looking at the fragrance notes yet, you guys. I will look here in a second. Okay, yeah, definitely white yellow floral fragrance. It's definitely like woody, sweet, a little bit. It's very green. It's slightly powdery, maybe a little musky, a little bit earthy. So yeah, you guys, I just looked up the notes. There is Ylang Ylang in here in the opening. And yes, there are Jasmine and Gardenia there in the middle. Wow, my nose is getting really good, you guys. I've sniffed so many fragrances now, I can kind of tell them when I can get a whiff, you know? Like I said, there's Ylang Ylang and Narcissus uh, with a slight hint of pepper in the opening. And in the middle you get Jasmine, Gardenia and Linden Blossom. I'm not familiar with that floral note. And then you get that Orris Root. I told you it's a little powdery, so there's a little powderiness. And in the base you get like really beautiful earthy woody notes. There you get Oak, you get Vetiver, Musk and Oak Moss. So yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely fragrance. Wow. So this is Central Park South. Very excited because I really wanted to know what this one smells like because I've almost bought this a few times because it, it sounded really good to me. Oh. oh, this is pretty too. Gosh, they're all good. Bond number nine is a stellar, stellar house, you guys. You get your money's worth. Their fragrances have the most amazing projection, lasting power, sillage. Yeah, they're expensive, but you're getting the bang for your buck, you guys, I tell you. This one is a very fresh white floral fragrance. It's very fresh, white florally floral fragrance. There's gotta be a bunch of white florals and other florals in here. It smells super fresh. This would be amazing for spring and summer, amazing. Same with Central Park West too, by the way. So like I said, it's a very fresh white floral fragrance. It's very floral. There's a little bit of woody hint. There's a little bit of greenness to this fragrance. It's very lovely. It's It smells like a, a spring princess, a, a spring queen, you know? Beautiful spring queen dressed in white with dew drops on her hair, seriously. So you guys, it's very interesting. The opening notes in this fragrance are actually blossoms of two of my favorite notes. This has blackcurrant blossom. Blackcurrant is my favorite, one of my favorite, you know, notes in fragrances. You guys know that, especially in the opening. And then it has grapefruit blossom. So there's very like freshness, like a green freshness to this fragrance from them. It has two of my favorite white floral notes in the middle, jasmine and lily of the valley very feminine and then in the base you get woody notes it's beautiful between central park south and central park west which one do i like better i gotta say central park west is better let me rank them 
out of the ones that I smelled, the band number nine ones. So my next purchase most likely will be Central Park West or Madison Avenue, you guys. I like those two the best. Next I have, oh my gosh, I have a ton of stuff still to go, you guys. Oh boy, I'm gonna try the Diptyque ones na next, I think. You guys saw in my birthday vlog, which I linked up there and down in the description box, I bought a Diptyque fragrance in New York City at the Diptyque Boutique. The the one I bought was Dosson. So you guys know my thoughts on that a little bit that I mentioned in that one and in my birthday haul, which, which I will also link up there and down in the description box. If you want a full review of the Dosson, check out my haul. But I wanna try these three samples I got with that fragrance purchase. These are generous samples, you guys. Look how big the sample is. These are like deluxe samples, really. So this one is all capital. This one is an order parfum. He gave me two order parfum and then order toilette. The one in the white is an order toilette. So let me try this one, um, all capital. Mm. Hmm. Very interesting. It has that signature diptyque freshness, you know, how they have the, the, the this like very natural freshness about this their fragrances. This one is a straight up rose fragrance you guys i smell the rose very fresh rose with patchouli i smell i smell the patchouli with the rose together very much i get a lot of earthiness from this so it gives gives me this fresh cut rose vibes it's got spiciness to it like very warm spiciness to it uh, and like a little bit of a soft spiciness to it it has citruses in here for sure it's a very balsamic patchouli rose type fragrance. So it opens with two of my favorite opening notes. There's pink pepper and bergamot. Can't go wrong with those two. Pink pepper is that beautiful bubbly spicy note that kind of gives you happy thoughts, kind of apparently make you feel like you're falling in love for the first time. It invokes feelings of falling in love for the first time apparently. Anyway, um, I really like pink pepper in the opening. Bergamot's always very fresh. There's a massive dose of rose in this fragrance, you guys. This is very much a rose fragrance. There's patchouli in the base, but I feel like there are more fragrance notes in here than what they have revealed. There are some spicy notes other than maybe pink pepper in here. I get a little bit of a warm spiciness. I'm thinking that there are more spicy notes than what they've revealed. It could be like cardamom, dare I say, maybe a very tiny bit. It could be cinnamon. I don't know. I feel like there are more spicy notes in here. It's very much a rose, kind of earthy, woody, warm, spicy, like fresh, spicy, slightly citrusy from the bergamot kind of scent. It's quite balsamic, actually, which is what makes me think that there are more fragrance notes in here than what they've revealed. So the next fragrance sample I have is also an Eau de Parfum. This is Orpheon. So the last one from Diptyque is this one right here. This one is an order toilette. This one is Eau Rose. I told the guy that I liked rose as a note, so he probably gave me two rose fragrances. Mm. Mm, this one's very uh, light right off the bat. It is a rose fragrance, but it's super light because it's an order to all that concentration, you guys. I'm getting the feeling that this may not last very long at all on my skin. I don't really tend to like eau de toilette concentration, you guys. If I'm gonna spend the money for luxury fragrances, they better come in eau de parfum or above. High oil concentration, you know what I mean? I feel like eau de toilette is like a waste of money. This one is a, a rose, fruity, sweet, fresh, very fresh, aromatic, citrus, maybe slightly tropically woody scent. I'm gonna spray this one on my skin because it's very light. I wanna get a better idea. Mm. Um, I can smell the lychee in the top notes. I smell the black currant for sure, that juicy burst of freshness with that bergamot in the opening. 
So there's lychee, bergamot, and black currant in the opening, which are some of my favorite notes. And in the middle, you get some of my favorite notes too. There is um, rose, geranium, and jasmine. Geranium and rose go well, well together. And in the base, you get musk, honey, and Virginian cedar, I think. Yeah, the honey, I barely pick up in the dry down, actually. The only problem is it's a gorgeous scent, you guys, but it's already starting to disappear on my hand. It's not, you know, it's not gone quite yet. It's there. I can actually smell it. It's just that it's very fresh. It's an order toilet. It, it would be really nice right out of the shower to spray this on and you would smell really nice. But I don't know if this is the kind of fragrance that you want to wear if you want it to last all day. Maybe not. But if you want to come out of the shower and feel like a princess bathed in rose water emerging from the water, yeah, sure. But however, this may not, like I said, last all that long on your skin. Maybe it will last on clothes. Next, I have a Joe Malone fragrance to try, you guys. This one is Fig and Lotus Flower. You guys know how I feel about Joe Malone fragrances, you guys. They tend to be of the cologne concentration, which is not a good thing, you guys, because colognes, you know, that's the lowest oil concentration, basically. I want Eau de Parfum or above. As I just said, if I'm going to pay top dollar, I need it to be a higher concentration. However, I hear the Jo Malone's in the black bottles and the red ones are longer lasting. They're apparently cologne intense, which I don't even understand what that means. Like, if it's cologne intense, it would be Eau de Parfum, I would think. But maybe a little lower than Eau de Parfum. But however, I don't know. I just am not like a huge fan of Jo Malone because of that. Yeah, this one's a, a freshy for sure, very fresh. Like I said, it has the same kind of thing that the Diptyque Eau de Toilette, like it's already kind of dissipating. As I said, Jo Malone's, they're colognes, you guys, what do you expect? And to make it all worse, this is actually a, a, a fresh kind of aquatic fragrance too. And then add the cologne factor to it, then it'll be gone on my skin in an hour, you guys. It's a very fruity, floral, fresh, aquatic, almost ozonic type of fragrance with a little woody hint. The only fragrance notes they've actually revealed are figs and lotus. So I would say there are some woody notes in here, like it could be cedar. I think I'm smelling cedar. There might be some aquatic notes, it could be watery notes, it could be, there could be a, like a, a marine note like ambroxan in here. There should be maybe one or two more fruity notes that are a little bit juicy, black currant like, you know. Yeah, not for me you guys. Jo Malone fragrances are not for me. It's already disappearing um, even on the, on the blotter card here. So that's a no. Uh, it's nice, but not $200 kind of nice. You know what I mean? Next, I have a fragrance from the House of Oud. This is something that I've heard so much about. Um, boy, people talk about this a lot. This one is called Keep Glazed. This is actually a decant of a, I think a 10 ml decant. I don't know. It's not quite a sample. It's bigger than that. Um, I have tested this out. Oh, and I quite like it. It's very oody, that beautiful oud that the House of Oud has. This has caramel in there. I can smell that caramel sweetness with that oud. That's what's really beautiful about this fragrance. It's a very sweet, fruity, tropically, coconutty, massively vanilla, even a little bit lactonic slightly citrus fragrance. The opening of this fragrance is just stunning, you guys. There's a mango note in the opening that is to die for. And in the middle, you guys, it's so delicious. It has a whipped cream note. There's coconut and ginger. Yummy. Oh, wow. That lactonic from that whipped cream is just delicious. And in the base, you get a bunch of really exotic fruits. Like they don't list them, but I can smell a bunch of really gorgeous, exotic, tropical fruits. Pineapple, for sure, I think. 
uh, and I'm smelling other ones, maybe guava, like there's a bunch of exotic fruits in the base. And then there are a bunch of like, I would say tropical woods, like they say precious, precious woods. I'm assuming things like teak, you know, or mahogany, that type of wood. It could be ebony and uh, there's musk, a massive dose of musk, which makes this very sexy. This is a definite yes, you guys. I'm definitely buying this, uh, a big bottle, the full bottle, the egg. Definitely getting it. It's quite special and definitely worth the hype. So next, I want to try these two samples that I got from Fujia, you guys. Again, it's this beautiful perfumery um, that was in New York. And when I purchased my first fragrance from them, if you want to check out what I'm talking about, check my birthday vlog. I bought the red one. I forget the name now. Uh, it's stunning. It's like a, a jasmine, sugar cane, and sandalwood scent that I bought. Mwah. So good. And she threw in these two samples for me. And I want to try them. This one is Agua Magnolia. So I'm assuming there's going to be magnolia in this. And I know this smells so good already. I'm actually going to try this on my arm. Um, it's because it's so beautiful. Oh, so pretty. It's definitely a, a white floral magnolia scent. Oh, it's, it's super pretty. Super pretty. Um, I love the note of magnolia. Magnolia is a beautiful feminine white floral. This one is a very straight up floral, white floral, citrus, and woody fragrance, you guys. There's magnolia, jasmine, and sandalwood in this fragrance mainly. There's a little hint of citrus from something in the opening. I don't know what it is. It could be bergamot. This one, I'm not sure if it's going to last very long because it's very light, I would say. It's very light, so I'm putting on a little more. Yeah, this one is quite light. The one I bought, I remembered the name. It's, it was Amalia Gromo. Um, the the sugarcane, uh, jasmine, sandalwood scent. That was red. The juice was super red. Uh, that one was quite strong. And this one is very ethereal, very light, very feminine, like a goddess, you know. But I'm wondering if it'll disappear too fast, you know because it's quite light and very ethereal. The next one I have is La Cortiva. That's what this one is called. Let me try it on this arm over here. Yeah, this one is a musky scent, you guys. It's, it's like a, a, a fruity vanilla musky type scent. It's powdery, it's floral, it's a little animalic. So this one is a weird one, you guys. It has like all the notes reversed. It opens with musk. I told you it's a musk scent immediately. That, that's the one I got the most. And then I detected the sweetness that's from vanilla. There's a massive dose of vanilla in the middle and that's it. And then there is blackcurrant in the base. The juicy, fruity blackcurrant note that usually you find in the top notes is in the base, you guys, you know? And that's like really weird. So it's like kind of like this fragrance composition is like flipped upside down you know usually you would find blackcurrant in the top you find notes like musk and vanilla in the base right so this one is a a little bit of an odd duck but it's beautiful it's beautiful it's so beautiful so next i have portrait of a lady by frederick mall um this one i've already tested you guys now i hear so much about it although i've already tested this out you guys it smells quite mature to me, I tell you. I remember it not being my cup of tea. Um, yeah, you guys, this is pretty. But there's something very like mature about this fragrance and not in the good way, you know. It's, there's something, I don't want to say this, but I detect something fecally about this. You know how sometimes some notes can have like a fecal quality actually jasmine the indolent type of jasmine can have like a, a dirty jasmine can smell a little fecally if you don't get the right kind of jasmine in fragrance notes so i'm getting a little bit of like a like a dirty dirt kind of fecal vibe very faintly again don't get me wrong it's still actually a beautiful scent this one's very warm spicy very embery very patchouli heavy 
uh, it's like smoky a little bit it's woody it's very balsamic it's floral it has rose in it as well it's powdery it's a very complex fragrance but the composition somehow comes off a little bit mature i would say i think the patchouli in here is a little bit of a dirty patchouli that may be where i got that sort of dirt earthy vibe so this has in the opening some really nice notes actually it opens with rose raspberry blackcurrant which are amazing notes by the way and it has a hint of clove which you can smell you get the spiciness right away and there's cinnamon in the opening in the middle you get sandalwood incense and patchouli that patchouli is in the middle it's very strong and i must say this patchouli is a little bit it's not a clean patchouli rather leaning a little like earthy dirt kind of vibe you know in it uh, if you're not a patchouli fan you will hate this and in the base you get some gourmet notes like benzoin which smells like vanilla there's ember which has it's a resin that has a little bit of a gourmet to it, twist as well and there's a big dose of musk it's it's a, it's a beautiful you guys but it's probably not for me it smells a little bit more mature than than what my personal taste is but it's still a nice fragrance nonetheless i do like the smokiness in here from the incense i think that's very beautiful dark and like sexy with the musk i like that aspect of it but probably not for me next i have a fragrance sample from atelier de ours it is fell um so let's see what this smells like i know I forget the name of the atelier one I want to get actually next I now forgot the name of it but this is this isn't it but I would like to still try this hmm very powdery oh powder bomb powder bomb iris duh of course it has iris in it so makes sense that it's powdery it's a very kind of dark type of fragrance it's very warm spicy like quite earthy very woody and very powdery and iris like a, a spiciness to it like cinnamoniness to it it's very quite balsamic very aromatic it's a little musky this opens no wonder i was like you know hit me in the face the iris you guys it opens with iris cinnamon and bergamot yeah there's a massive dose of iris in the opening which is where you get that huge powdery opening you can smell literally smell the iris right away the middle is quite earthy you guys you get haitian vetiver and patchouli which both tend to be very earthy and there's the nargamotha oil which i'm not a fan of the cypher oil it's called nargamotha same thing i don't tend to like that one because it's very herbally you know there's something herbally about that and it could be nice sometimes like depending on the fragrance structure and by the way i like this fragrance it's very unique and beautiful but it's quite powdery and has that sort of like you know warm spiciness earthiness and all that with the powderiness it's a little bit strong i guess if you like a strong fragrance you would like this and by the way in the base you get myrrh you know like myrrh is one of the oldest fragrance notes in the world you guys and then you get labdanum musk and liatris liatris is a, like a wildflower you guys i really don't know what it smells like yeah probably not for me this one is a little bit too powder balmy and at the same time it's like slightly herbally with the warm spiciness and the woodiness it's a lot going on in that um so maybe not that one so next i have something from house of siage this is whispers of admiration i got this with one of my house of siage purchases mm, very beautiful very feminine it's it's a very like white florally sweet sort of fruity kind of coconutty citrus a little bit lactonic vanilla tropical maybe slightly it opens with coconut and clementine oh yeah that citrus is very different it's very lovely with that coconut it gives it a little bit of a like a tropically vibe and in the middle you get gardenia which is one of my most favorite white floral notes and you get candied apple in the middle which adds a sweetness to that beautiful white floral and in the base you get sandalwood and musk but i have a feeling this is going to disappear on my skin very fast it has that kind of 
scent about it, that quality about it. It's already dissipating on the bladder card here. Yeah, this one isn't going to last very long. I can tell you right now, but is it a beautiful scent? Yes. Am I going to purchase it? Probably not. Then I have a um, sample from Lalabo. This is list 41. So this I got from the Lalabo counter a while ago. I haven't tested it. I want to test it out real quick with you guys. Lalabo is a house I have not purchased anything from yet. And they gave me one of those like stupid samples that doesn't have a, um, a, a sprayer, an atomizer. Ooh, this one is actually really pretty. This one is definitely a massive white floral fragrance, you guys. It's white florals and woody. I can already tell you there's jasmine in here and tuberose. I can smell the bubble gummies tuberose without even looking. I haven't even looked at the fragrance notes. Definitely jasmine. Uh, there's definitely tuberose, maybe lily. Yep, you guys, my, my nose is good, you guys. Those three white florals are in it. Jasmine, tuberose, and lily. Wow, they're in here. And there's a, a good dose of vanilla apparently in here. There's musk and um, woody notes. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful scent. It's a beautiful white floral scent. Uh, and it's quite strong and I think it would last. So you guys, that's it. Those are the luxury fragrances that I wanted to test that I had samples of. I can tell you right away what I'm going to purchase for sure. I'm definitely going to get the Bond Number no. 9 Central Park West and I'm going to get Madison Avenue. Both of them for sure. Those will be my next uh, Bond Number no. 9 purchases. But down the line, I might also get the Central Park South and the Madison Square Park which was a beautiful fresh scent it was really nice but it was beast mode still see that's the thing about bond number nine that I love they even when they make fresh fragrances they're beast mode you guys amazing and I'm going to get the um, house of oud keep glazed I'm definitely getting a full bottle of that I'm not getting a portrait of a lady I'm also not gonna get the atelier de or a fragrance I might consider le labo 41 if I ever get a le labo fragrance that would be one I would consider not the Joe Malone, I'm not getting it. Not worth the money. Next time I go to New York City, I'm gonna get Agua Magnolia from Fujia. So yeah, that's it you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so YouTube can notify you every time I upload. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, you guys. We have a lot of fun there. I post a lot of, you know, shoes, clothes, bags, you know, fragrance stuff, personal updates. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in my next video.